Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cybersecurity Crash Course. Today, we are talking about business email compromise. Do you want to know how the most successful attackers break into your business, break into organizations' email accounts, and use them to pivot to other parts of an organization? If so, you're going to want to watch this to the end because we have a lot of great things to talk about that are going to really make it clear for you. But before we get into the content today, this is lesson six in our cybersecurity crash course. As you can see, we've already discussed some pretty amazing and interesting topics already. If you have not seen those videos, go back and watch them, especially lesson number five on phishing. We showed you a clip from a real phishing test and call we did that you're not going to want to miss. One other thing, be sure you grab the companion guide at the link shown below. Any tool we talk about, we'll have links to it in there. We'll have some exercises for you to do to help you improve the cybersecurity at your organization. And with that, let's start talking about business email compromise. So to understand business email compromise, we need to understand how it works. And usually the way this is done is first of all, the scammer will set up a fake email address or a domain to look like it's coming from your company or from a vendor that you actually deal with. You see, it's so easy to get a domain very similar to an organization you want to ta target. So here's what I mean. Let's say I want to attack Fiverr. I'm just picked an organization out of the blue, but to get a point across. So Fiverr's address is Fiverr.com, right? Look. Okay, that's their domain. I can go and purchase fiverr.dev and look it's available and it only costs me $12 a year to buy this domain to, and then I can begin I can set, I can go to something like GoDaddy hosting and look web hosting only costs $6 a month so $12 for a domain six dollars for my first month of hosting i'm at eighteen dollars and i can pull off a pretty sophisticated attack against this organization this is not hard to do so again just to reiterate and to be clear what i just showed you is for demonstration purposes only i do not condone you doing business email compromise attacks against organizations unless you are hired by them to do it as part of a social engineering test so once an attacker has a domain, next, the attacker will send out emails from that account that look very legitimate. Then they wait for an employee or employees, if they're targeting more, to fall for the plot and to log into that account or web page. And with what I showed you with the web hosting and the domain, it's not hard to do. This is an example. This is a real example from a penetration test we did on an organization. And the way that we got them to log into these accounts was we sent an email alleging to be from HR. It was the end of the year, which worked perfect. So we claimed that the organization had done a profit share and they deposited X amount of money into their 401k account. It had been set up for them since they didn't already have one. We did, had already done a recon and figured out who had, did not have a 401k using some other phishing. And it was set up in a 401k account for them using their domain credentials. They need it to go in, log into this, convert this account to their personal account and change their credentials. And as you can see, the 401k domain on the right is the legitimate site. The one on the left is the phishing site that we set up. We got individuals to log into this and we got their credentials. Now, the login quote unquote form on the fake site, this is, was built in WordPress, was actually a contact form and we added a special feature to the alleged password field that obfuscated it, just like a real password field would. And they, the individuals did not know the difference. The, after they logged in, they were rerouted to a, this page cannot be displayed, that looked just like what Google would show, but it was actually just a web page. So that is how business email compromise works. There's a host of ploys we have used in the past on penetration testing or um, security awareness or uh, test, etc. 
This is another fake website we set up. This was to look like my, a Microsoft Office login. Again, another site we set up. And in this case, you can see, back to what I was saying about the attackers is, they can make these sites look pretty real. Um, in this example, you see we have the, quote, secure lock, because we were behind an SSL. But as you can see, this was not a LinkedIn.com domain. This was something else.com with a LinkedIn subdomain that we used to fool the individual. So these are all things to look out for. And again, it looks just like a legitimate login page. Another fake login we set up um, for a penetration test. So the attackers, once the individual logs in, if they come across two-factor authentication, they take one of two actions. They stop, they give up, or they try to get around it. So I've been walking you through how this happens. Now I want to show you, or let you listen to rather, how we did this on a penetration test. This is an actual recording for a call from a call we did. Some parts are edited out for security reasons, but take a listen to how we were able to get around two-factor authentication at this organization. So to add, I want to add to this, after we got into this account, we created Outlook rules. And this is something you should look for periodically. Take a look in your email. Look for look at any rules that are there. Go through your boxes, your those little folders inside your email and look for anything unusual. Because what we did, once we got into this individual's account, we added our phone number as a backup to FA so we could get in anytime we wanted. We also created a rule. We stayed looking for a little bit. This was a engagement, so we had a timeline. We couldn't sit forever. We dug through their emails looking for anything sensitive, first of all. And then we sat around looking with who they were talking with, uh, what conversations they had going, things they were discussing. And when we felt it was appropriate, we responded to a conversation. We sent a fake, fake link for them to log in to get their credentials as well. And we created a rule in Outlook so that when the individual replied, the reply went straight to a subfolder and never came to the inbox and they didn't see it. And this is something attackers will do. They will create rules to start routing your email so that you don't see what they are doing. And they will use one account to pivot to others inside of the organization. So that's something to look for. Look, periodically check your Outlook rules and look through your folders for any unusual activity. So how can you protect your organization? First of all, one of the basic things you can do is set up email authentication. SPF, DKIM, and DMARC are three authentication protocols that you can set up to cut down on some of the spoofing and faking of your email addresses. It's not perfect, it won't stop everything, but it will cut a good bit of those bad emails out. Next, use an email security solution. Modern email security solutions are very, very good at spotting attempts to masquerade as your domain, domains that are very similar. They can catch a lot of this. They can add alerts to the email so the individuals are alerted that this is potentially malicious to be on the lookout for it. Third, train your staff. You have to train your staff on the risk of business email compromise. You have to train your staff on the risk of phishing so that they are aware of it and they will be more likely to catch things that go wrong. Number four is Create policies and procedures. Have policies and procedures in place for how things are done. So if the attacker gains access to your email and they send an email from your legitimate email to someone asking to maybe do some kind of money transfer or to change some kind of payment method for a customer, you have policies in place that show this is not the way it's done and the individual will be alerted. They might come ask you. They might come ask the person who sent the email or they might simply refuse and avoid the purpose of the email compromise. And on our point of security awareness training, we have worked partner with an organization to provide you free security awareness training that you can use for your employees. You see, annual security awareness training is not effective. It's not enough. You have to keep it in front of your employees, always on top of their minds for them to be aware of it and make smart choices in their day-to-day -day activities. And if you go to training.cyberx.tech, you can get a complete security awareness training program for totally free, unlimited employees, no strings attached, that you can use to train your employees. Even better, all of the videos are less than two minutes, 
So it doesn't take a lot of time, but they pack a lot of value in that short video in training your employees to avoid common scams. Okay, so back to business email compromise. How do you respond? And first of all, you have to train your employees to report it. And as an organization, you can still report this to law enforcement. Next, when something happens and the attackers are able to gain access, immediately change any account credentials that were affected and reset 2FA if you say an app was set up or anything of that nature, reset that and your, notify your customers and the impacted individuals. In some cases, you might need to notify vendors because the attacker might try to use your email to pivot into a vendor to get them to take some kind of um, ill action. So those are some ways to respond to business email compromise. And hopefully that is helpful to help you keep your organization safe.